And it's, it's quite interesting. Um, I need to tell a little story before I get started. Um, last year, it was about a year ago, probably a couple of months before that, uh, Prabeen and, and Zaid had come to my office and they had this funny look on their face that uh, they, did, they had a problem, they didn't know how to solve it. And they came in and said, listen, we're interested, in, we got this great idea, we want to start this club, Toastmasters Club, first in Singapore, but we don't have any money, how can we go about this? So after about seven minutes of talking about it, saying, how much, you know, how much are we talking about? They gave me the dollar figure. I said, well, let me, let me have a few conversations with a couple of other folks. So you've heard the, you've heard the concept of the, the passing the hat around? You've heard this? So you pass the hat around and see how much money you get. We did that with several of the leaders in channels, in sales operations, and in our organization as well. And we ended up getting uh, kind of a collective effort to be able to get this group, this, uh, group off the ground. And it's, and it's been absolutely amazing to watch this last year. Right, the difference not only in my people, because I get to see them every day in terms of their enthusiasm, in terms of how they've really embarked this club. It's just amazing and I'd like to just congratulate you all, first first of all, to start on the great work that you're doing here. Okay? Because this is this is stuff that you'll build on for the rest of your life. And it's it's obvious just by how efficiently it's been run, how some of the awards that you've already won, um, you guys are just getting started. Okay, so congratulations on that. So I have a I have, a, I have a few things that I've put together tonight, and I know I only have about 10 minutes, so you've you got to keep me straight, because I do tend to talk a lot, right? So <laughs> I'll try to be careful. But I want to say, again, congrats on the first year. I want to do a couple of things on my personal journey with communications, right? And I want to talk to you a little bit. I'll share, be revealing some things that hopefully uh, that will resonate with you, and that it's, it's certainly not over. I think the thing that you'll find as you go through this journey, right, it's, it's something that you learn all the time, right, with every experience, uh, this one included for me, right, so I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I'm going to give you my top ten. So you guys have seen David Letterman, right, this is Darren's top ten, you know, I'll give you a, a different version of that and a little bit of visual picture to kind of watch that as we go through that. So let's go to the next slide. So this is meant to be the, the communications highway journey. I'm going to start from the top and I'll move down to the bottom, but in the early days, um, I would explain myself as a public speaker as nothing but fear. It was up there with death and taxes, right? Absolute fear. And I don't know how, if anybody else in the room would resonate with that when you started this process. Scared to death. Like literally the night before you go, I can't go to the office tomorrow. There's no way it's going to happen. So, fear. Um, I, I think as you, as you go through time, I started my sales career and I found myself that in, in small group situations and one-on-one -on -one situations, I was very good, right? Really, really good with people. But when it started to get to a bigger crowd, man, it was really, really scary for me. Um, I'm going back a few years now, but the, the first experience that I had of, of watching myself on video was shocking as well. And I see this awe counter. <laughs> I used to have the word, my, my um, transition word was basically, right? And as a salesperson, I got videoed, and we were doing a demonstration of a product, and I said basically 37 times in seven minutes. <laughs> and it was like, you know, nails on chalkboard watching that, right? But it, it's a great way to learn. So the other thing that I, I experienced over time was that I, I really had a challenge with bigger groups. It would get bigger than five, and I was just like, I didn't like it. I didn't know why, right? Um, but I think it's something you have to get used to and you have to get comfortable with over time. And the only way you do that is by doing it, right? Is by actually experiencing it and getting comfortable with it. I think one of the things that I've learned about public speaking is that the people that make it look the easiest, and you go, wow, they're natural, it's nothing natural about it. It's because they do it all the time, right? And, and they make it look so easy, just like the athlete or anybody else, okay? The aha moment for me was that I realized that I would do better when I was prepared, right? When I felt comfortable about the subject, when I knew um, what the audience, audience was kind of thinking. So in those scenarios, I, I just always did good. So it was one of those things where if you can think about what situations you're going to be in and, and have that preparation, it always, I think it always helps you, right? So just a, a nugget there for me. And again, the repetition piece, the more often you do it, the more comfortable you get with the people that's in the room as much as you can, I think it's just a great scenario. And then the last piece is you can always improve. I, I think we always try to raise, we, we do at the Cisco, right? We raise the bar all the time. 
and we're always thinking about, boy, I gotta get better, I gotta get better, and, and you can, right? And it does happen with just a little bit of work. So let me, let me segue into the top 10, and who knows what the, who these people are, first of all? Does anybody know who these two are? Aerosmith? Wayne and Garth. This is Wayne and Garth, okay? So I'm dating myself a little bit here because this is from this is from Saturday Night Live. These these two young men used to like perform, um, you know, in a band in their basement all by themselves. They were quite they were quite funny, but they used to have a top ten list. So I thought I would do a Wayne and Garth, Darren's favorite top ten list about communication. So let's uh, let's roll with the first one. The first one is uh, sounds pretty simple, but it's <laughs> smiling, right? It's really hard for people to not like you when you smile, right? And, and breathing. I don't know if you've seen some people speak where you go, oh my God, they're going to pass out if they don't breathe. <laughs> so, so literally, take, take a moment, slow down, have a breath. You know, it's good because the audience actually wants to breathe too. So. <laughs> uh, passion and enthusiasm, I think, is, is obvious. Um, if you're excited about the topic, usually people feel that, right? So, you know, try to, try to sprinkle that in as much as you can. Prepared, confident, and feedback. So the feedback one is probably the one you go, why is that there? You know, we have all kinds of situations at Cisco, and I know for the sales teams and, and, and obviously internally, where we know a lot of people that are in the meeting. We either work with them before, um, we're peers, we're, we're collaborators, whatever. Seek somebody out that you trust, and it, it's great in this environment, you can do it here, but do it in your day-to-day -day environment as well, right? Say, hey, I'm trying to do a certain thing in a presentation, or I'm trying to get a point across, can you help me out with, did it hit the mark, right? And ask for that feedback, because that is a critical, critical part of the, of the process to improve. Eye contact, connect with somebody. You know, sometimes in rooms you just go, oh, that person's scary, I can't remember. <laughs> but find somebody in the room that you, you connect with, right? And make sure you make eye contact, contact during the presentation, because that helps out a lot. It makes the audience comfortable, makes you comfortable too. Um, know the audience when possible, right? And this, sometimes this is really, really hard, where you show up in a place and you've never met anybody, and you go, how am I going to know them? You can meet them a couple minutes before. You can check out the room before you get there. Um, but again, if you know a little bit about the audience, it's always good to sprinkle a little bit of personal stuff into it, right, wherever you can. And uh, move your body, hands and arms. You see people standing there like, oh my God, I'm going to pass out. Um, move around. It will, make you more, it will make you more comfortable, and uh, it'll make you feel a little bit more animated. Uh, interaction. Icebreakers are good. So if you can, again, plan, plan that into your, your presentation, and again, sometimes it just takes the... The, the nervousness away, and, and I always try to do that when I start, because I, for me, the starting part is always the hard bit. Usually once I get going, I feel fine and natural, but it's a starting part, so even plan that into your, uh, to your pitch. Um, and then stories and experiences. I, I think people, at the end of the day, are people, right? Text and data and stuff is great for a lot of, a lot of scenarios, and you need that in certain things, but if you can make it, make it real to them in terms of stories and, and telling stories, it always resonates more. And then uh, pictures remember. I hope you remember Wayne and Garth, right, from this presentation today. Will, will you walk away and go, why did he talk about Wayne and Garth? <laughs> so hopefully you remember. And then the last one is, um, this is one that was another aha moment for me. Um, you know what you're going to say. The audience doesn't, right? Because a lot of times I think we put pressure on ourselves naturally. like. Oh my God, I didn't say what I was going to say, but they, don't, they have no idea, right? <laughs> so the, the, fact, the fact of it is be confident in what you're delivering, right? And, you know, you're, you're really the person that is, is delivering the, the, the piece of communication. So hopefully these tips helped, right? Was I under my 10 minutes? Was I on? Was I close? <laughs> How many hours? Oh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, good.